install trick. I'm really excited today to be sharing with you about a cool piece of software that I got to try out called Doubler2. Doubler2 is created by a company called Voclia, and it's the second version of their original software called Doubler, as the number <laughs> might imply. And essentially, Doubler lets you convert um, your voice into any instrument that you want to. It takes in the audio information from your vocals, for example, and it converts it into MIDI data. When I found out uh, about what Doubler could do, I was really excited for a number of reasons, which I'll go into in a moment. But first, let's kick things off with a little bit of a jam that I did with Doubler. So I hope you enjoy it. my jam <laughs> and literally and now I think it would be cool if we dive into actually how I was doing that if you've been in my audience for a while you will probably know that I wear a number of hats so I'm a performer producer songwriter when I put ideas together depending on what musical part I'm starting with my workflow does tend to differ from time to time now one of my workflows that I use fairly often, I would say a, a good number of times, is I start with a chord progression first, and then I build the rest of the parts of a song around it. So that could be the drums, the more percussive elements, the, the melody, little motifs here and there. So for this particular project, I did begin with a keys part, like I said, but I actually played it on push, <laughs> which, uh, on note mode, which also, if, if you've been in my audience for a while, you'll know that I'm a fan of, and I like playing in note mode. Um, so I came up with the chord progression, I think it was D minor, B flat major, C major of a couple of tensions here and there. So let's just take a listen to what it sounded like. Cool, and then repeating. Um, and after that, I added an additional bass part, cause, kind of because I always think of like, you know, right hand and left hand in a way um, on the piano. So I came up with this quarter note bass part, fairly straightforward. Cool, and then together, they both sound like this. So that's my main harmonic content. That's the first step. <laughs> that's just the first step. And then all the other layers come in. And these come in a multitude of ways, but one thing that I, I've often found myself doing, um, ma mainly because I like to hear how a lot of patterns sound, is that I'll often sing things to myself. So if it's a drum pattern, for example, I might do something like doom, duka, doom, doom, ka, doom, doom. And then that would be the drums that I would then have to transfer into my DAW um, and pick you know, the right kinds of sounds, the right kinds of samples for that. Sometimes I might even record it on my phone and then put it into the DAW, convert it, la di da di da. And it's the same thing with melodies and motifs. Um, I often think of ideas in my head. Sometimes I, I also do play it, you know, on, on push or keys or on my flute <laughs> as well. I love playing the flute. Um, so sometimes I do that and then again, I have to transcribe that into 
through the DAW. And this time, that's where Doubler 2 came in really handy because instead of me transcribing it in a little bit of a slower sort of way, all that I did was sing and pseudo beatbox. I'm not the best beatboxer, honestly. So I tried to do it um, into the mic, but it ended up sounding really great. And it got put into my um, session very quickly. Before I did all of the um, transferring into the DAW, I did have to do a little bit of a calibration process to make sure that Doubler 2 was recognizing the way that my voice was sounding and how I was using certain sounds or how I wanted certain sounds to trigger specific kinds of notes. There is a little bit of training that you have to do in the app. So if you're familiar with machine learning, it's a bit of a, a similar concept. So if you take a look at Doubler right now, we're actually looking at uh, what's called a profile. And I have a customized doll trick profile that I made for myself and my voice for this particular tune. And yeah, there's a specific tab called train uh, where you would basically train each <laughs> sound that you're going to have exit your mouth, trigger a certain note. And in this case, I triggered, um, I trained really three types of notes. I had a kick, a clap, and a closed hi-hat. And something that I'll also add is that um, Doubler Voclia does have a, a specific mic for Doubler, but with Doubler 2, you can use pretty much any mic that you want. And I, I think it's recommended that you use a dynamic, which is why I have my trusty Sennheiser E935 over here. This is my favorite stage mic. I used it to add on drums as well as the melody and an arpeggiated synth part. In this project that I put together, Doubler was um, you know, taking in my audio from my voice and then converting it to MIDI, but Doubler does have built-in sounds too, like synths. Sounds. Um, so I, I might use that for another project. Who knows, right? <laughs> but back to this one over here. Let's take a listen to how this works. So for my controller, I'm going to go ahead and arm my drum track, and then I'm going to try using a kind of sound, um, which is the sound that I was using to trigger a kick drum. Let's see if this works. There we go. So I'm going to try to switch between different sounds. I'm going to do the drum one, uh, the kick drum first, and then I'll do the uh, clap, and then I'll try doing the hi hat. So here we go. So there are my three sounds. <laughs> and if I just speak normally, you hear all of them going, whoa. So those are my drums. And eventually when I started to layer them together in a more precise, focused sort of manner, like you saw in my performance, we ended up with something like this. Cool. So we got the kick, the clap, and the hi-hat. After that, I used doubler on the bells, like I mentioned, um, to do the melody. I made sure that the key that doubler was set to for anything that's melodic was D minor because my project is in D minor, right? Remember the progression from earlier on the D minor, B flat, C. Let's try that again. So I'm gonna go ahead and arm the bells track and then I'll do a little bit of a sweep bar. I'll try to sing a couple of notes and we'll see what happens. So even if I try to you know, sing other notes, it'll snap to some kind of note in D minor, which is pretty cool. And eventually while jamming out, I thought of this motif, uh, which becomes the main melody. So let's take a listen. Great, so that was the bell melody. Now, last but not least, I mentioned the arpeggiator part, right? Which is um, this one over here. And for this particular part, all that I did was actually sing just one note. The, the tonic, D, I just sang that. <laughs> uh, and thanks to the wonderful devices inside Live, um, which I, I used to put together this arpeggiator patch, uh, I just had to sing one note and then we got all of this lovely oscillations and, and all of this wonderful movement. So here we go, let's try it out. Da. There we go. If I can, and I can sing any note. <laughs> It'll just uh, keep moving, which is pretty cool. <laughs> cool, and eventually, this is what the part sounded like. Cool, so oscillating between the tonic, the fifth, and the octave above. And that was essentially how the song came together. So with all of these parts uh, layered on together, let's, let's take a listen. Let's add the drums. Here's the melody. Arpeggiator. And then 
was just, you know, going between different kinds of clips, <laughs> jamming out, having fun. And because it was all so smooth, I was really happy that I used Doubler um, as this new tool in my producer slash performer sort of kit. And maybe it's also because, um, you know, the drum part was really fun for me. It, was, it got me actually a little bit nostalgic. So here's a throwback. A number of years ago, I did um, a music technology hackathon with Red Bull called Hack the Hits. It was really fun. It was in Chicago. My team and I, oh, we didn't sleep for like, I think two or three days or something, but we created this, um, this instrument where essentially it was a face mask way ahead of COVID. You would wear it and you would beatbox into the mask and the mask would um, pick up your voice and through machine learning, be able to convert that into uh, MIDI information in real time. And we called it beat mask. So that has a, a bit of a special place in my heart and especially for the drums. But anyway, all in all, that is a little bit of an intro to double too. And if you found this as fun um, or as interesting as I did, which I hope you did, um, I'd love for you to try it out as well. So if you'd like to give Doubler 2 a shot, and if you'd also like to simultaneously support the work that I do as Daltric, uh, you can head over to the description of the video and there is a Daltric affiliate link, which you are more than welcome to use for Doubler 2. Thanks so much for watching this video, everyone. It was really fun to kind of break this down a little bit with Push and Doubler 2 and Live, uh, and I really hope that you enjoyed it. Thank you again as well to Vaklia for letting me try Doubler 2. It was really fun. And to take us out of this video, here is a snippet of the eventual full project that I created from this Doubler jam. It's a piece that's called Syndrome, uh, and I hope you like it. So see you soon. Bye. trick.